But then again, it's also North Carolina. And you know how North and South Carolina get. The humidity is 150%. Mm-hmm. Like you can literally grab some air and ring it and all of a sudden stuff comes out. <laughs> yeah, like, what the heck? Yeah. How the heck in the world? Yeah. And of course it's, you know, hundred and hundred plus in the summer. So, and then a sh- little shed, it's 120. And if there's any hot glue, just forget about it. So what you're saying is I should store my planes in my attic. Oh yeah. If you want them <laughs> to turn back into foam sheets, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Welcome back to the Aviation RC New Podcast. My name is Joe. And I'm Matt. And today we're going to discuss uh, methods for hangar rash prevention, uh, specifically ways to store your airplanes. Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess more specifically ways Matthew and I store our airplanes. And we'll we'll lean on uh, other people who kind of put their hat in that ring of, hey, well, this is what I do when I want to do when I need to store my planes in a certain way, right? Um, mm-hmm. There's multiple methods to do it. Joe and I have found ones we like and we use, but uh, we're, it's not the only ones. Um, I prefer well, you to... You mean we're I not pre- the end-all be-all? Um, well, I, yeah, well, you're right. We are. That's we're pretty really much... not. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. No, but no, it's, uh, you know, but but there are, there are other ways. I mean, like my way is put it on the dining room table. You know, and I know yeah. that that's not viable for a lot of people. Oh, no. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, no, long my, my wife would kill me if it yeah, was in there be, for more than She'd be upset evening. after about uh, three or four days. I think she'd give you a little bit of grace, and then she'd be like, all right, Joe, it's time. Yeah. Well, they were strewn across the guest room bed there for a while, and <laughs> yeah, there were. Yeah, let's, look, it's a, it's a flat, wide surface. It's soft, prevents hanger rash. Um, it does. We need to add that in there. A spare bedroom. Um, no, and then, uh, you know, and if nobody's using it and you don't know anybody's who's going to come there anytime soon, then it's not a bad place. It's out of the way. Well, but it's not a bad place, except when... When somebody I comes, have... then you got to move everything real quick. <laughs> well, yeah, that, but also, like, I snore really bad. Oh, well, sometimes was... you need that bed. Yeah, well... Or she does, if she Me decides... or she. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Somebody's gonna be shifting spots. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's so much better now. Not get too deep into it, but now that I'm on the CPAP, so much better. Yeah, that's. Uh, she mentioned that too <clears throat> when we were last time we were hanging out. Uh, she's like, I'm like, how's that? Uh, she's like, yeah, but when it's on, it's awesome. When it's not, when it's, it's on. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess well, like it there are times where comes I guess off you the middle of the night. Yeah. Well, we're you know when you're over at my place, it's like you kind of pass out half. It's just too, too late when we all get to it, and you either forget to put it on or don't want to don't want to wake her up trying to get it on. I guess, and then you end up you know snoring or whatever it is. I guess that you guys. Anyway, have to work out. thankfully Amy uh, is uh, she has hearing aids, so when she goes to bed, she can't hear what I'm snoring at her. It's great. <laughs> uh, so back to the voice. actual topic. My bad. Oh no, uh, I'm sorry. But before we get in, no, that's totally on me. Squirrel. Before we get into all that, yeah, really, let's uh, let's talk about what we've been up to lately, and then okay. we can go over some community events. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think Matt, you've got some other stuff uh, in that area you want to talk about. I see a, a highlight here um, in the notes. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try. Like I've got it slated to record a, one of. We talked about the noob stories. And I finally slated the time to record it this week, so I should be able to sneak it into this episode. Um, nice. I'm, so I'm looking forward to putting one of those. I think we're going to get two noob stories uh, recorded, if not this week, uh, between this and next. Um, so the next couple, you know, two or three episodes, we'll have 
have some of those in there. And, and it's, I'll call it a light week. Um, last week was uh, a thank you for all those listeners who were patient enough to to wait out us uh, posting the uh, composites episode where we talked to Red mm. Jensen. And he gave us almost every single tip from a long timer uh, that I've ever heard in one one sitting. I, th- I think I, I just I'm going to put together a couple highlight reels and it's going to be like eight minutes of back to back tips. It's uh, it's pretty incredible. He, they, he really did put together a, a wealth of information there. So if you've been thinking about composites or want to understand it better, it, it's a great episode to listen to. So thank you for bearing with me and waiting for that. Um, if not, if you've already seen it, I'm glad you, you took a listen. If you listen on the podcast, go watch it on YouTube. Um, there is a slideshow presentation that goes through about half of it. And it just just kind of seeing some of the things that are that are going on while we talk, uh, I think it's worthwhile. So mm-hmm. um, I, I do also recognize it's four hours. We're very close to it. So Good I recognize night. we're going to hit out. We're going to have to hit it in bits and pieces. Um, I put we're in chapter sorry, markers. sorry, guys. Yeah, that's okay. I put in chapter <laughs> but markers. But it was like good conversations. It, it was amazing. I mean, I really, like, I know I'm about to get into it. So every one of those things he was talking about, I kind of half researched. I had researched fairly well, so I knew what he was talking about, but hearing him talk about it and seeing some of the videos he's produced helped me understand, I'll call it the procedures and stuff that are described in how-to videos, right? And and Mm how-to, you know, blogs and stuff like that. And don't get me wrong, they're really good, and we have a a link to uh, one I particularly uh, like, I think, in the notes on that one. But, um, you know, on, on weeks like that where... It, it's a lot. It's a lot to edit. It's a lot to get together. It's a lot to get out. I'm really proud of it. Um, I love the conversation we had. But this next week, it's like, oh, geez, it's coming up real quick now. <laughs> so, um, but, and, you know, there's been a couple things that are of interest. Uh, and this is a listener topic um, today. Uh, thank you to Spitfire Richard um, for uh, Spitfire76 uh, in our Discord community. And oh, is this his forums. idea? Yeah, this was his idea. If I if I recall our notes, if they're accurate, um, he says I'd love to hear what you guys what your thoughts are on storing airplanes, how we store ours and otherwise. So, mm-hmm. and I th- I remember like you, I'm like I think we talked about this some time ago, but it was probably kind of packed in the middle of an episode somewhere. But yeah, where I we kind of breeze through it, you know. But we'll okay. we'll talk about that some more. But uh, yeah, so and we have and there's been some news. It, there's some I'll call it. We don't normally call, cover news, but I think these are all kind of things that's like, hey, if you didn't know these things happened, you might want to check it out because it might be interesting to you. So well, we'll I know when, new, news-ish. I know when we were starting out doing the show, like news was something you really wanted to be able to, to stay on top of. There's yeah. just, life is busy. So it like I don't keep up with it. So by the time something bubbles up and grabs your attention, you know you're like Joe. And I'm like, I I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, so no, you, right. The and news that, sections are also good for me. Yeah, I mean, if we had um, we'll call it a news correspondent, somebody who wanted to take on the news stories every week for about ten minutes and just kind of highlight the things that have been that have been in the buzz, right? Um, but in the RC aviation industry, there's Typically There's not always too much. so much, yeah. There's some, but it's not a whole lot. And it's more about who you follow and who, who excites you in the industry that you're like, oh, check that out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, some of that is this, and some of it is just, you know, there, there are a couple things that are unusual, right? Um, and I'm not, we're not going to cover... Uh, well, you'll, you'll hear it. it okay. We'll go through it, and we'll just... Uh, you know, let us know what you think about it. If you'd like to hear more of it, or... If it wasn't, you know, either we need to do it better or um, they don't bother. It'd be nice to know. You can send complaints to Matthew at AviationRC.com. <laughs> yeah, or AviationRCNoob at gmail.com. No, don't send it there because then I'll see it. Yeah, no, we can both see it. <laughs> you can still right. blame me. So, journey time. Um, I can tell you mine has just been continuing dealing with the things that are going on in my world. Mm-hmm. Um, thank wow. you for taking on all of the editing and everything of our last episode that 
uh, took all that off my plate and freed me up to do the things that I need to do. Yeah. Um, and I was able to carve out enough time to be able to sit down and us have a discussion. Um, okay, good. But yeah, I, hobby wise, shuffling my planes around a little bit and just trying but, to organize a few things. But yeah, I see that your rooms. Every time I talk to you, that your room gets a little bit more organized, a little bit more. I will call it presentation ready. You so, know, a little bit. Yeah, it's getting there. I like it. getting there. The same kudos um, to you. Well, how about this? Let's focus for you. At when all the stuff kind of slows down and you can you can stop having to focus on it on a regular. What are the couple things you are looking uh, forward to tackling? What are the top three things on your list of things to Ooh, take care top of? Top three. I didn't even think it that far. Uh, I know. Well, <laughs> Let's I, give it. I absolutely hope that I'm going to be able to build one that I'll still be able to make flight fest this year. Um, which shouldn't be a problem, but you know, you never know, um, right. until you do. Uh, so gotcha. I'm still planning to make, still planning to make flight fest. And for that, I want to have the giant wonder built. Um, okay. I'm starting to fall fairly behind schedule where I wanted to be on that at this point. So right. maybe I can start diverting a little time into that. Um, other things, uh, I want to take the edge out flying some more. Okay, and yeah. I've got the seven hanging right there, the HRC seven, and mm. I still haven't flown. Mm. Here's the here, here's what I'll say. I've recognized that there's um there's a like a pucker factor or like a not a fear factor, but you really like the plane. The last thing you want to do is on the maiden flight, kind of doink it and then go, oh crud. Well, honestly, at this point, it's. Anytime that I have tried to take it out or planned to take it out, something oh. has gone wrong. Like yeah. the the remember that time we took it out and the battery wasn't right for it, and then yeah, and then the there was another time I was getting ready to take it out, realized that I had taken it out there, but then one of my um, clevis nuts had fallen off, mm -hmm. and so my control yeah. or, or my push rod was just a hanging. Mm -hmm. And right. then another time I was prepping to take it out and my control horns had backed out, like come unglued. Right. So yep. I was like, it's just cursed. Uh, <laughs> it well, may it, just be a hanger queen forever. No, no, no. I think I th it's, it's a good flyer. I think it deserves to be flown. I need to build the one I drew out. I need to cut that other one out. If you have not flown yours by the time I build my second one, is it, it looks like I must have done enough damage to the to the original and the yellow one that it, it's never going to fly quite straight. I've tried it a couple times and it never quite, like it flies okay, but it's weird mm -hmm. every time. And I'm like, I must have done something to it. So I'm going to rebuild it. When I rebuild it, if you have not flown yours by then, we are going to go together <laughs> and we are going to be bound and determined to make sure both of ours get a air. chance in the air. Okay. Um. And hopefully, I won't try to fly it inverted and don't get straight into the ground again on the first go. <laughs> Look, um, I can help you with a lot of things. I can't help you with poor decisions. Well, no, you can't. No, but at the same point, I'm expecting that if we're together, we're going to make smarter choices. Or we'll make really dumb ones, but have a blast. Going. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. So, I, I pledge that to you. I okay. will put things aside. If you... if if. I get around, you know, things I've been working on different things here and there, and we'll talk about it in a second, but I, I that has been on the corner of my eye. Like, you know, I probably should build it. Cause I really, I have the yellow one hanging up cause I love it. It's beautiful. You know, it just uh, don't fly right. No more. <laughs> no, it doesn't fly. That's my fault. <laughs> um, and then of course, certain parts of the way it was built, I realized now that if I had reinforced it as I built it, I wouldn't have had, um, I could I could have crashed it and it still probably would have flown okay. Like uh, you know, I loosened a couple of spots that were weaker, and if I had reinforced them before we kind of buttoned everything up, um, I think it would have been alright. So, oh, um, uh, change of gears for just a second. No worries. Yeah. Um, I forget the I forget the gentleman's name. I don't have it right in front of me, but somebody had reached out to me over the email and was mm -hmm. asking about the new Warner kits and wondering if they were still available. Oh right, yeah. Um, they are not as the speed build kits. That was a limited run by yep. the Hangar RC. Um, 
and that was just leading up to Flight Fest, and then he took that down. Uh, but the plans are still available. Um, yep. Yeah, the plans are any- always available. Yeah, and just for anybody that happens to be looking for them, uh, just as a recap, we'll throw them down in the show notes of this episode. But also, we can't thank you for going ahead and grabbing that or making a note of it. Uh-huh. Um, we They're also on the flight test forums, uh, all his wonder variants, but that one as well. And then mm-hmm. in, the, um, in the Discord server, we have a file share channel that I believe the plans are in. If they're not, you can ask oh, yeah. around and somebody will dump you the plans. Um, and then all, it was also brought to my attention that the Discord link on the website's busted, so we're going to be fixing that if anybody's been trying to join. It was linked to... Uh, a previous invite? No. Uh, oh, oh, you're talking about yeah, the, the link to the actual Discord server on our mm-hmm. webpage, yeah. Um, we'll get to that as soon as I can figure out how to go do that. Um, it's been a while since I've played with the web page for a couple different reasons. Um, and not that I'm, I'm not like paying attention to it. Um, but yeah, uh, when I get back to, it, I'll have to go uh, fix that link. If not, I might just remove it for a moment until we can get it, uh, get it linked. Um, but I appreciate anybody who brought that to our attention. It's a big help. So we don't always click on all the things. Um, what was I going to say? That's okay. I don't know, because I totally overran you. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, I should have been able to hold it in my mind. <laughs> yeah, what were we talking about? Well, we can talk about your journey. We are talking about new wonder plans and such. Um, oh, I know what it was. Um, I'm going to talk to Sam or uh, any of our other... We have a handful of friends who have laser cutters at this point. Um, see if we can't get those files maybe from Sam and and you know make sure that we can print out. I would love to have we'll call it a li- another limited run uh, for the coming flight fest. And we, that we bring them with uh, for okay. sale. And then that way, uh, if you want to buy them from us, when we get there, you, you absolutely can. Um, it is much easier to build with this uh, speed build kit. Um, I wanted to have a handful just kind of hanging out so that we could give them away as gifts or prizes for different contests and things like that. So um, yeah. So that's something I, I wanted to be able to do. Um, so I will talk to Sam or anybody, a couple of other people that I was going to lean out to. Um, I might be able to even do it on my uh, needle cutter because it's um, it's that time. That's right. You I got found the bearings. the bearings for that, didn't yep, you? Yep, I got the bearings, and uh, I'm finishing up uh, the, <laughs> the build jewelry items. This is the last couple days to try to throw those things in the air and show that they fly. Um, and so part of what I'm going to do is I wanted to get the needle cutter working to be able to start um, getting accurate cuts for uh, the bigger stuff. So as I start working bigger and I need accurate things like accurate ovals or or whatever, uh, intricate shapes that I want to do. Like if I want to do spars, I want to do, or or what are the ribs? I'd like to have holes in those ribs. They're a pain in the butt to cut with this, with a, with a knife. They just Mm -hmm. don't. But if I can, if I can put it under the noodle cutter and let that do the work, then great. I'll have that happen, you know, and then I can have uh, lighter aircraft uh, with better supports. So um, looks like I might be trying to do that. So that'll be on my early agenda at some point in the next week or so, I think. Um, so that's there. Um, Builder is closed. So all the planes that I built, but last since last time we talked, I decided for whatever reason, I, I know actually why the reason, I decided to build four old bogeys. You know, because the four planes in the build month weren't enough. That building four ring planes and a couple you know, motorizing the small ring planes uh, wasn't enough. I decided I needed to build four old fogies, two of which I have kind of motored up and um, I had various issues with it this weekend. One was like the control horn was loose and the other one, the motor was twitching. And I think it's because I overheated the motor and I shorted out somewhere in the coils. So it, it just twitches. Oh, so I'll nice. have to get, yeah, it's, well, that's my fault. I ran it <laughs> hot too long. Um, I'll have to toss that one and uh, get a new one. And it's one of those cheap 
um, very inexpensive, like $5 motor. So I'm not crying too hard about it. I, I knew what I was doing when I did it, sort of, you know? Right. It's like, it came down, I'm like, ooh, this is hot to the touch. That's bad. I took a whiff and I'm like, that smells reminiscent of magic smoke time. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> oh, I don't know. And then it kind of looks like gummy. And usually when you're spinning a motor and it's resisting you, it's because there's a short in the wire and it's actually inducing a magnet, uh, magnetic field in two wire loops, which actually oppose the motion. Okay. Right. Cause you're spinning the motors, the magnets induce a magnetic or induce a current in the wires. But yeah, if they're shorted, it'll start generating hand, a, yeah. Yeah. If you, if you hand spin a motor, it turns into a generator. Right. It turns into a generator normally. Kind of. Yeah. Right. But if it's shorted out where one is touching the other, it actually it generates a, a field in the next coil, which actually hampers the movement. So it should normally spin free. But if it doesn't, that's probably either you've got really good motors and, and here go if you hear it kind of as you're spinning it goes pop 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 like in a segmented way. That's mm -hmm. probably because your your magnets are really close to the stators, and that's a good thing. That means it's it's going to really uh, your electrical energy is going to be transferred into circular motion efficiently. But if it isn't like that, and these aren't that efficient, um, when I spin it and it's resisting me, it's, it's because it's. That's what's happening inside the motor. So I, I burned off the, the protective coating and some of the some of the wires, I'm pretty sure. So, um, yeah. So it'd be the so, first plane you did it with. Well, not, with those, so the thing with those motors is, uh, one, uh, they run on 3S. And every once in a while, I forget that and plug in a 4S. And then mm -hmm. that'll burn up the wires pretty quick. <laughs> that'll do it quick. That'll do it pretty, you know, about half throttle for a little bit. It's a, uh, and another one is, you know, having a really aggressive prop well, basically over propping it will start to pull too much current and that'll mm -hmm. heat it up just enough to start melting the wire and cause the problem. So I, I think there was one plane where I needed to peg it to keep it in the air. And <laughs> that means I should have had a bigger motor and a bigger prop. Instead, I was doing this little motor with a little bit too aggressive prop and it, I think I, I pushed the motor too hard. And that's, I think that's specifically what happened with this one. So, um, But it's been fun to kind of diagnose and figure out well, is this the ESC? Is it the motor? Is it the, you know, do I have some other component that's not any good? And and it'll be easy enough to switch this out. I've got a handful. Now that I know where all my motors are, I've got a whole box that I can pull, you know, sort through and kind of pull out something that fits. I've got a couple in there that I, I just eyed up earlier today. So, um, uh, the easy pack uh, rings, I gave one of them a test this weekend and it flew. Um, I think it was a little tail heavy. I think the CG point is a little bit further ahead than I thought. Um, so I'm going to put the, a little bit more weight in the nose and see if I can get it to fly a little bit better. I did fly it around the field a couple circuits. Again, it was kind of like a... It was a hairy ride. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to like, no, don't go past the... Don't go past the safety line. Oh gosh, don't go way too far. Come back. Don't come back. <laughs> oh gosh, too far. Too too fast. Oh gosh, you know. Um, yeah. And then uh, Amy Amy did was able to record it, and she uh, she asked me when it got brought in. She's like, I think the motors the, the prop is too big. Don't you want a smaller prop? I'm like, I do, but I wanted to see how it flew first. You know, like my goal. So she's like, I was having a hard time. I'm like, yeah, that was more. Yeah, I think the weights. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. So what I'm trying to do is fine tune the circle planes so that I can get a couple uh, motor systems that are guaranteed. Like, look, this is how to build it. And then kind of publish that as like, guys, I want everybody to, if you want to join in the crazy that we're going to have a flight fest that I'm going to bring, you know, make this right. This, this, or this. These are the mm -hmm. things. Um, anyway, so we'll see. We'll see where that goes. Um, see if people join in. I don't know. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. Uh, either way, I'm going to have fun, and I hope everybody else can join me in having it. So, um, and, and now I'm able to be able to focus in on uh, getting the aircraft carrier, the air carrier, in in the air. So uh, I started working on landing gear that I've got to kind of fit on how it's going to fit into the bottom. And um, I was planning on doing some of that tonight, but I ran out of time. Um, the joiner between the landing surface and the main body. 
So there's um there's a main body core, and I originally envisioned that kind of coming straight up, uh, tucked up under the airfoil of the landing strip. But if I'm going to use the air strip or the airfoil of the top surface, there kind of needs to be air going through that on the underside. I think. Okay. So I was like, well, I don't need that space. I don't need those that inch. So why don't I top the main body and put kind of like these little stilts that allows air to move in between the two surfaces. Maybe that's a mistake. So we're going to see how that goes. So I'm going to give that a try. And I'm going to, that'll also allow me to attach, allows me a good way to attach the top surface to the main body of the, the wings. Um, I've already got the motors mounted. Uh, I've got to work out the servo placements and wire that up. And then I think I'll be ready to go. Ready to give it a test and get that flying. Um, if uh, I'm going to be putting iNav on a SpeedyB controller, wing controller, I think, um, and use that for stabilization, I found the box with my FPV uh, three-way switch. So I'll probably put uh, three FPV, you know, um, cameras in there and switch between them. And I'll have them placed throughout the vehicle. And uh, I was also thinking out the Pappy lights. That's basically the landing lights in a normal airfield. The red and white ones that are on either side of the airfield. So I was looking at how to make those. And I think uh, I'll be able to test something out early next week. The Mad Scientist Lab is open. I'm, cur I'm curious to see how all this turns out. It's going to be interesting. Uh, well, well, what I want to do is I want to get... So I just realized, oh, we got like three months. Not even. Right? Six, uh, three and a half. Yeah. Right? To, it's coming fast. For me to build a plane that's three times bigger than the big one I've already built. Ish. Right? I've got a lot of details to work out. Most of those don't need to even scale practically. Like, if as I work out, like, here's how I'm going to like this stuff. Okay, well, that... You don't have to really scale that up. You know? It's what it is. Um... The Pappy lights. If they work, they work. I basically move it over to the, <laughs> move it over. Um, right. The spinner to get the planes launched. Um, once I figure out that system, it's really just making sure I have enough space in the body of the plane to do that. Uh, so I, I don't think that's going to be a big deal. Like genuinely not, not worried about that at all. I just need to build one and send it. And I, I found a motor today. Uh, one of those little, little, uh, orange can motors, but it's the 22 kV. So it's like the one that spins a five five inch prop. So what I'll probably do is I'll put that in there and maybe put a CD or get some of those old CDs I don't use and use some foam in between and use those as the uh, the, the the launcher because it's inexpensive and it's available and why not? Um, yeah, so. There's a lot of things coming up. I'm really excited about Build Your Way Finished. So I've got to kind of close out that with the judging. Uh, that's going to technically end in two more days uh, for videos and stuff so I can start editing and, and uh, just reviewing everybody's stuff and giving them scoring. Okay. I'm looking around to see if there's anything else. And then, you know, there's a one or two more things I'd like to kind of shift around in the shop. I'd like to move the shelves next week. So hopefully next time I've talked to you, that, that'll be where it is, and I'll have some uh, mood lighting, a little bit better <laughs> than I typically have. I don't know. Your lighting in there is generally pretty good. Yeah, so with the with the shelving unit on the other side, I can do one side blue, and the other side is currently orange, right? And then have maybe a, a white light over top, like a dim kind of white light to highlight the flag. Um, and then kind of, I want to set up hangers. Using command strips, maybe hangers around the coffer, the coffer ceiling, right. and hang planes from the ceiling so that I can get some of them off the floor. That's not going to be every one of them, but it's going to be some. Which is why we need to talk about the topic today. Very good. Uh, but before we get into that topic, you want to talk about um, what? What is that March fifteenth? Uh, that's uh, we could either have that build night or a sim night. I don't care really which. 
Um, well, it's currently it's not on the calendar or anything. No, it's oh. not. Oh, you just set up a bunch of. Oh wow. Okay, I was looking at yeah, the. Where um, <laughs> no, I'm looking at the events in Discord. But you just set up like a whole yeah. series that continued through the Friday nights. Right, right, right. Uh, did Sorry. it go all the way through March? It shouldn't have. Oh, yeah, it did. Oh boy, I'll have to delete that. Conclude the series. But basically, the fifteenth um, is when I'm looking to do the next one because um, the weekend after. Uh, let's see, the 23rd and 24th, I've got a scout camp outing, and the 30th, I've got, um, that's when it's Easter break and you know, spring break, and then that, there's also a fly-in, that's actually one of the announcements. Um, the Piedmont Aeromodlers Airfield, look up our club, our airfield is having a front fly on the 30th. Um, I should probably have the event details in front of me to be able to tell you all the details, but you can look it up on our webpage. It should be there, and if not, it's on our um, Facebook page. Uh, it's basically from uh, early morning at, like, I think the doors open typically about 9, and they tend to close, we'll call it close, at, you know, at 3 o'clock, they kind of close the event down for the day. Uh, and then I think it's Saturday and Sunday, but I think I only saw the third. So it may just be the Saturday. And it's a fun fly. So if you have an AMA membership, you are free to come. And, and I think the pilot fee is usually $10 or $15. Uh, and that basically pays for you to kind of use the facilities for the day and join in the festivities. There's uh, a number of raffles. I can't remember what they're giving out this I missed it this week um, at, our, at our thing. But we, we have a couple things to give away. We always have a myriad of like little things like, um, I don't know, uh, not batteries, but, you know, glue and, you know, accessories that you always kind of need, right? Um, a couple of things, or maybe one of those, like, glue caddies, you know, help organize your space, that kind of stuff. Um, uh -huh. We have those throughout the day, and then there's a raffle, a big raffle for usually one or two planes, the local hobby shop, Hayes Hobby. So if you remember way back to one of our first episodes, I think it's like episode two or three, we spoke to Alan Hayes. Alan Hayes is a big supporter of the club. And he oftentimes gives us a really good discount or a or he ends up donating um, a craft for us to raffle away so we can we can promote the hobby. Um, nice. So, yeah, come out and join us. I, I'm going to do everything in my power to be there. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's one of those things. It's um, it's an awkward place and an awkward day for events for my family. But I, I'm going to try to get out there. And what I want to do is I want to have this thing built, tested and flying at that fun fly. Wolf. Well, I mean, if it is, then I know exactly what to do to make it bigger. I'm going to go do it. That's true. And I'm going to tackle that full, full tilt. Because what I want to do is I want to have that thing, the big one done, by the end of maybe the following month or a month and a half from then. So that way it's available for any events from that point forward. Whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Because I really do want people to try to land their normal fun you know, flight... Uh, park size flyers on this thing. And I want it to loiter around and have be be a I don't know, ridiculous. So we'll see. All right. But uh March fifteenth is the day that I know I'm available to do a build night. Um we could also make a sim night. Uh maybe the 29th, because that doesn't involve uh, anything but kind of getting together. And we could do that. And I'll, I'll make a note of that and see if I can put an event in the Discord. If you haven't joined our Discord, please join the Discord. There's a link at the bottom of the uh, at the bottom of the show notes. Um, yeah, come come join come join the Simlights. Uh, we have the event events happen at the top of the of the channel list. Um, but it's a great group of people. We'd love to have everybody join us. Uh, also, big thanks to our patrons who keep the lights on every week. Uh, every couple weeks here, um, making sure that we can focus on other things rather than having to spend our, our full hobby budget on uh, keeping the podcast stuff going. Uh, so big thanks to everybody. If you think this is of value to you as you go through and you want to join our patrons, uh, Joe, how do they reach out to the, the patrons? Patreon.com slash Aviation RC Noob. Fantastic. You can see, uh, usually you can see what's going on. Um, I guess ways to see the different um, episodes that we promote 
or we, we put out here um, on our website at uh, it's www.aviationrcnuke.com. Um, and we have a YouTube station. That's where we're starting to put our videos. So anytime we have a really long involved thing, usually with a guest, um, it usually have visuals and stuff that we want to make sure everybody gets a chance to see. Um, so we post the videos um, there too. And those, those will oftentimes have um, any of those uh, presentations. So Nice. All right. So then I guess that brings us to our news. Welcome to the news-ish. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So talk to me. What's been going on? Well, there's. I, I saw three things that I felt like, if you haven't seen them, I think they're worth taking a look at. Right. I mean, um, Ramy RC is. I'm going to start with that one, uh, and then I think we'll we'll go to the we'll call it the the downer, um, and then we'll go to something that's pretty cool. Uh, so Ramy RC, and, and this is pretty cool too. Ramy RC is um, an RC enthusiast, and he's been he's in love with airliners, and he's been building airliners since he started doing it probably four years ago or something on his channel, and he he builds. Pretty big airliners started out pretty big and they got bigger and then they got bigger <laughs> and he's you know he's like i'm using this and we're talking like 120 millimeter edfs to start with or 80 millimeters which are pretty big and they they put a lot of thrust out and then now he's i think he's he built a globe master with i thought they were 200 millimeter edfs which those are monsters and they just suck down all the juice so fast i remember my um seven or 80 millimeter uses like a 80 amp BSC or, or even 100, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's it's just eating, eating all the electricity <laughs> and turning it into thrust. So uh, in his last project, he ended up building a Globemaster. I can't remember the... Uh, what's the... Is that C-130 Globemaster? Uh, let me look at a link that you sent me. It yeah, if C you don't mind. C-17, that's what it is. Um, but anyway, so he worked at a Globemaster. And we're talking, this thing is... Like stands on the runway, like four and a half feet tall. That's not counting the tail. Tail's higher, right? And it's, uh, I think it's a 20 foot wingspan. And I, usually that means that it's about a 15 foot length of the fuselage, right? Mm -hmm. It's massive. Um, it's and he ended up, uh, so it's like kind of like the next scale up. Um, I guess he was invited by Tyler Perry, which is, he's been mentioned on the flight test forums. Apparently, and he's an actor who's had a lot of uh, success. He's clearly an RC enthusiast um, to the nth degree. And and I guess he said, you know, I've got this facility. You got, you're you doing some amazing stuff. Why don't you come out to visit me and make this dream of yours for this giant Globemaster come true? Let me help you, right? You know, not, not help as in let me do it for you, but like, let me lend you my facility so that you can get this done um easier right right which is really cool so it, and i didn't i haven't been following it all the way through so uh, there's more to it but i i just looked at the video of him flying it at tyler perry's uh place in atlanta and it's it's just really cool you can see him he's like nervous as all get out because i'm and, and i'm thinking like you and me <laughs> remember you and me with those 300% new wonders going, oh my God, I can't believe we're going to fly these things, you know? <laughs> and we launch it in the air and, you know, it's in between sketchy and like, no, it's flying exactly the way I hoped, <laughs> you know? And it's like, oh gosh, I don't want it to mess up. Oh gosh, oh gosh, you know, the whole time, right? Worried that something's going to go wrong and all this effort and all this time and the joy that you've already had are like going to smash something. Um, as we learned, you can recover from that pretty quick. Um, anyway, so yeah, it's funny cause he's sitting there, he's going, I don't know. I don't want to fly it. I don't know. And Tyler's like, cause Ty I think Tyler Perry went, he's like, I'll fly it. And he flew it and he checked it out and he's like, yeah, it's good. Um, I think he did at least enough stuff and verified. He's like, dude, you can do this. This is easy. It's going to, it's going to fly like a kitten. He's like, I don't know. I can't, my nerves are getting to me, <laughs> you know? And so he like I'd, took it, I took a time out. I would be terrified. I know, right? Me too. <laughs> like, oh no. And then so it was so funny because he he got it he got up and he did like two circuits, and then he brought it in and, and Tyler uh, talked him down. You know how when you're talking to a new pilot, like, no, no, a little bit more. It's okay. You'll be okay. Okay, a little bit mm -hmm. further. No, no, hold it there. A little bit more throttle. A little less. A little bit more. Okay, 
pull up. Okay, flare it. A little bit more throttle. There you go. And he, and he brought it in. And he greased the landing. He did such a great job. It was job so climbing. good. Yeah, it looked so good. And I was like, man, so good. I, I, wanted the, I wish I was there. I could give him a high five or a pat on the back. Like, heck yeah. Um, but it was really, it's really cool to see. And because you, you could see, he like, he gets done. He's like, oh, man, his hands are shaking. He's, you know, all the adrenaline was getting flushed out of the system. You know what I mean? He was, he was definitely, <laughs> he was nervous, you know, and then he's like, go do it again. And he's like, no, 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 no. You should fly. You should fly. And I'm like, no, I don't need to fly. You need to fly. It's your airplane. Go do it. And it was so funny because he's like, okay, we'll give one more circuit. And then went up and they, they did one more circuit. And he brought it in. And he's like, oh, it's like 20, 20% on the battery. He's like, oh, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> like three circuits was enough, you know. Um, but it was really cool. It was cool to see the camaraderie. It's neat to see the, we'll call it the, um, the experienced and the new. You know, kind of working hand in hand. They clearly have a same love and a same passion. But they're, you know, encouraging each other. And I feel like I've been on both those sides, right? You know, I've had people talk me in like, no, a little bit more, a little bit. And it's like, oh, this is it. This is what I'm, this is what I haven't had, you know? This helps me understand it now. And I've been that. I feel like I've been that for others too. You know, we're right. like, no, there's no way. Like, you're like, no, no, I don't know. I'm like, come on, you can do it. I'm, I'm here. Worst comes to worse, you know, we'll laugh at whatever happens, right? Like, that's a big good time. Um, it was just, I, it's a really neat story, you know? I mean, it, especially if you watched his channel kind of, it's clearly building bigger and bigger. And you're like, holy cow, that's, that's a pretty, imp- I don't even know how he brings it to and from. Like, that's crazy. Um, and of course, now as I embark on this large journey, um, I'm thinking, how am I going to transport that? <laughs> I want to know, how does he do it? Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm interested. Uh, it's it's pretty cool. It's a really neat story. If you haven't seen it, we'll, we'll send a link to the YouTube uh, in, in, the, in the show notes. Go take a look. It's really cool to see how he did it. It's exactly what we talked about in our last episode with Red. He had one layer of carbon fiber that he wet out over top of basically, um, uh, what, what is that? A uh, styrofoam plug, mm-hmm. right? It was CNC. That's, that's where Tyler Perry's facilities kind of helped out. And he basically had a big CNC machine. He could, he could put a block of foam and, you know, kind of auger out the side. So basically it's like a one or two inch shape, right? And the outside is perfectly CNC. So it's it, not a lot of work to actually get that done. But when he's done it, it, you know, he had to do a lot of work with the uh, CAD file stuff, you know, with the actual model. But, you know, after that, which is kind of what he does, because I think his normal method is he creates a 3D printed um, mold. So he he prints out the mold, sands the snot out of that, makes that uh, thing, and then he builds the plane halves from that. That's his normal method, which is pretty involved in and of itself, right? Um, so it's kind of helped him cut out another section. So anyway, he put a uh, carbon fiber and then he did a uh, layer of fiberglass on both the outside and the inside. And they had spots where he reinforced it even further. And it's really cool. Like if you're interested in building large, take a look at how he builds this. He basically made a styrofoam sandwich um, with carbon fiber and fiberglass, which is exactly what Red's going to do with his wing spars, right? He, t- he said, he's like, yeah, I'm going to have foam and, and basically carbon fiber on each side. And that's my spar. I put two of those in the wings and or, or more, right? And he's also going to do the, the glue limb piece that we he talked about too but though those two um that method is essentially how he created this big giant plane he thinks like oh gosh it's going to be um I don't, I don't remember if there's a thing that said how heavy it was but it had to be pretty light it had to be crazy light honestly um but it was neat it was neat to see exactly what we learned in our last episode episode 93 on um, composites with red and see him use exactly those techniques to do this really lightweight, incredibly large, really cool looking project and see it to completion very quickly. He said he ended up having like three months. It took him to go from, I think, uh, model to flying model. Which is pretty impressive. Given the size of it? Yeah. Yeah, I figured that was a year or two project. He literally climbed on it. And was riding it around taxing. Did he? it's that big. Yeah. 
Yeah. Go, go to the, like the previous video when he just does a taxi test. And then he's like, come on, get on it. And then, you know, this is what Tyler like, egged him to go do it. He's like, really? I'm like, he goes, you know what's strong enough? Come on. <laughs> and he got on it and he's sitting there taxing around like a little kid with his, you know, with this little, little car. It's fun. It's just neat. It, it's a, it's a neat series of video. I'm, I'm really glad I decided to click on it and watch. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I'm eager to kind of go back and see, you know, how he finished up different parts of it. So it's pretty cool. Neat project. Um, an item in the news, if you didn't know, kind of like I don't know, because most of the time I'm not in, like I listen to the drone world, but I don't, I'm not a photographer. I don't use, I don't have a DJI drone. I'm not going to spend $1,000 on a drone that doesn't do anything exciting except take pictures. <clears throat> At least to me, right? I know, Joe, right. you've got uh, you've got a Phantom, right? Yes, Phantom 3. Phantom 3. And then you've used that. And that's really cool to actually see and see it in action. And I know it's helped you do a handful of things, which is pretty cool. It is very it is a very good tool. I will give it that. But it's, it's, not, it's not exciting to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, unfortunately, DJI is a, is a China-based company. And their, their practices are to collect and control all the information that goes into your quad, more or less. So basically, they have a thing where they, they're in charge of what they push and don't and take from your drone data-wise, for the most part. And you also put it to your, your card, right? But they mm -hmm. also have a kind of a remote link. Like when you, when you plug it in, it says, oh, hold on, we got to update. And then they, they update software. But... They also collect data from your flight so that they can improve the product. But it's also China, so everything that's done in the in the effort of the state welfare is also state property, right? And if you're America worrying about what China might be doing next, that's information they might use to do God knows what, right? So the military has been very concerned over the last handful of years. Um, so it, so lately. Um, there has been, uh, there's a ban detailed in the American Security Drone Act, or ASDA, which has been rolled into the National Defense Authorization Act of 2024, which was approved on December 22nd, 2023, by our president, Joe Biden. And it specifically bans federal agencies from purchasing or using drones made in or made with components from countries identified as a threat to the U.S., that's China, Iran, Russia, and North Korea. Which two of those make a good amount of product that go into drones and all of our RC craft for that matter. <clears throat> so I'm kind of curious as to what's going to happen with that. We'll put a link to the article and I'm going to kind of highlight maybe a couple more pieces to this. So where did I put it? Um, uh, I don't know. It would have been smart if I didn't click off of it and it available. <laughs> Shoot. All right. Let's just click on this link. Click on the thing. It's going to be great. Uh, all right. Um, I guess part of the thing is, so it's, it, it started out with um, the military was banned from using DJI drones. Or basically the, the, the drones manufactured from, countries of a threat, basically, or however they indicate it. But basically, when you're looking at, uh, if you're doing any kind of work for state agencies, like, um, let's see, service providers uh, for federal agencies that use drones for, for other national security reasons, they, they can't be using their DJI drones anymore. Also, public safety impacts. Uh, oftentimes, if you're working for a state agency like... Um, like my local utility or um, a police or a fire department. Uh, I, although I don't think the local agency, I think that's still citywide and it's not really officially a state run agency. Um, but basically if it's a police or fire department, the federal ban could influence whether or not the state is going to impose its own ban. Um, and this already happened in Florida and Arkansas. Huh. Um, so if you're using one of those drones to basically, that's your business to go and help, like for, for, you know, the local power company, when they have a hurricane come through, what do they do? They call up their local drone guy and say, hey, can you survey the lines and see where the damage is? I don't know why we didn't do it locally, like in-house, but, but still, fact is, is 
that that could likely impact whether or not uh, you know North Carolina, in my case, uh, passes something that says, yeah, we don't want to use that either. So what they what they are concerned with, um, they're just worried that these that the information that's gained and passed through to China um, may put our country at risk for. I don't know what for for I guess weakening its defense, right? Right. Um, so yeah, just like if you didn't know, um, and if you if you look at like most of the state agencies that were that used the UAS or had a UAS program fleet, uh, they, they were comprised of was it ninety percent of those agencies had DJIs, and then it's uh, was it twenty or nineteen percent had an autel. A, there's a Skydio at about 11%, Parrots uh, at 10%, and FLIR. Uh, those are those are oftentimes for um, thermal camera recognizing. Um, so when you're looking for a lost soul, right, somebody's lost, and, and you're hired by your local fire department and, and for a search and rescue mission, you may not be able to use DJIs anymore. So um, FLIRs are oftentimes on those because it helps pick out somebody as it gets dark, right? Because um, you can see the thermal, uh, the thermal difference pretty easily. Right. Um, there's a lot, you know, the, the article goes into a bunch of different impacts and stuff and kind of talking about in 2020, um, DJI were, was put on the Department of Commerce's entity list. So these are people who may be putting our country at risk. And then uh, Blue UAS program was launched and provides a list of thoroughly vetted drones that were approved, which means that if you're not on that list, you don't get bought by federal agencies. And then in 2020, uh, NDAA bans Chinese drones for the DOD use, the Department of Defense use. And then in 2022, DOD specifically blacklist DJI. They're identified as a Chinese military company that poses a national security risk. So in 2024, they extend that to not just um, Department of Defense, but now we're looking at federal, all federal agencies. Mm-hmm. So that if that's you, that may impact you. And you may be already aware of this stuff, and maybe you aren't. Um, it also may impact what one. If you can get a DJ drone real, real cheap now, <laughs> it might be flooding the market pretty soon. Um, so if you've been on the eye for one, but then again, the way things work, you may just be in the no no takeoff net, uh, and you might have a DJI drone, but you may not be able to take off because it's in the nope, we can't fly here spot, um, which is what China controlled, right? They're the ones who gave the um, whether or not you were in a fly or no no fly zone, right? Like you'd arm your DJI and they'd say, nope, you can't do it here, You're too close to the airport, hmm. right? So that was kind of embedded in their thing. They had a a geofence basically. And so what they could do is say, well, here, we're going to make all anybody who has one, we're going to make him all useless. We're going to just say all of America is a no-fly zone. So take that America. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's what they're going to do, but they certainly could. Um, that's the way their software kind of kind of works. And, and originally it was to make sure that they, you know, that even if you didn't know what the compliance rules were, that you kind of had to comply to be able to fly a DJI drone. Yeah. A, ultimately, I think for safety originally, but it kind of also highlighted how in control of the data they are. Yeah. So, I don't know if that kind of did it back or forth. Anyway, I wanted everybody to know about that because I, I feel like that's new, worthy uh, for everybody to kind of understand that it's happening if you aren't uh, part of it or affected by it directly. And I guess last we go to a story that's pretty cool, I think. Um highlighting some of the new capabilities of um, of racing drones, I guess. And it's basically a Red Bull sponsored drone versus Formula One racing car. So if this you was are nuts, it's kind of it is it's pretty nuts. So if I'm watching a Netflix series on Formula One, and it basically goes over the last six seasons of the Formula One um, racing circuit. And you get to know the drivers, most of them and the, from like middle of the pack you know, 10th, 8th place up, right? And matter of fact, uh, Red Bull, their top top guy, he was he was featured in pretty much the whole first season. Um, and it's pretty cool. It's neat to see that he's 
you know, in at the end of the season, they made the dramatic switch to to Red Bull or whatever it was. And um, anyway, so it, it was just know, it was just really cool. Um, so you get to watch him uh, fly. They basically have one of the professional pilots, the drone racers, uh, say, "Yeah, I'm, I'll keep up with your, you know, with your Formula One racer. I'll do my best." You know everything I can do, and uh, it's if you haven't seen it, go see it. I know it's kind of a bit of promotional stuff because that's how um, Red Bull works, right? And they've yeah. been very strict about where you can and can't, <laughs> can't watch their video. I guess um, you know, like a, if anybody uh, makes a clip of that and puts it on their series, right? Like uh, some of the drone racers are like, "Oh, check out this," and they do a little clip. It's like, nope. The the you know they'll be hit for copyright infringement, so, um, but it, it go go watch it. We got a link to it. Um, it's really, really interesting to see how fast this drone is. It looks like basically a bullet, with four arms coming off, and and motors. Honestly, basically. now that you say that, it makes me think of like a little stubby. Um, why am I blanking on his name? Ethan, uh, oh, yeah. Mutley. It mm-hmm. may, like now that I think about it, it looks like a little stubby Mutley missile. <laughs> yeah, that's essentially what it is. You know, it goes from what zero to two hundred miles an hour pretty quick. I think they were going one hundred fifty miles an hour on average. Right, which is that's crazy fast. And I think they were hitting upwards of two hundred miles an hour at different spots. There are definitely spots where, like, the Formula One car was like outpacing the drone a little bit. Um, but, but for the most up. part, but basically it, it, it was like, oh, no, got to hit a turn. And then the drone would be right on it and kind of following it around in the stuff. So it, go watch it. It's really cool. I think it's a great way to highlight how far the drone industry has come. And I mean, drone industry is in the racing drone industry has come and, and the skill of the pilots that are, that are doing that kind of work. I mean, yeah. you got these guys who are doing the DR, DRL, which is drone racing league. And, you know, you occasionally see the videos on ESPN and things like that. And they're really cool to watch. You've got like five or, you know, eight guys that are just, and generally speaking, they're guys, um, that are just killing the race. And they're just neck and neck and neck. And, you know, they're knocking each other. Sometimes they'll knock into each other like a real Formula One race. And and it's just really, you're like, whoa, look at that. You don't really kind of get a context for it, but they're like zipping around an entire stadium, right? Like, I mean, we're talking the full, you know, soccer stadium in Europe kind of size, like big mm-hmm. full stadiums. And they're zipping around the quarters and doing the things and coming out of the they go through the loop and it's like it's really cool to watch. These guys are developing the skills that allow them to do this kind of work for car industries and Formula One and things like that. Because I, I think one of the things the drivers were saying is like it is really cool to watch this footage because it's I think the first time that it really kind of captures what it's like to be in the formula one car right what they were saying was that they they have drone or quad footage of like flybys where they're kind of like flying across a track or kind of catching them in a turn yeah no the drones the quads have not been able to keep up with them and really hang with them and keep pace and follow them around the track yeah which is what this one was doing Exactly. The whole way. Uh, the only thing it was doing was ha- having to go over the bridges. I don't think they didn't, they didn't want to risk the drone going under the bridge and missing. <laughs> right. Not uh, at but, this yeah, stage. No, not, not at this stage, but I'm sure they will uh, in short order. It's not uh, uncommon for them. I, I think uh, part of the reason why they might have been doing that is to make sure they didn't lose signal. You know, at, at some point, like they're at, they're at one spot, kind of standing in the, at the top of one of the buildings near the center. And they're just, you know, trying to make sure they get you know, full coverage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just really cool. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's it's worthwhile. I we did not get paid by Red Bull, unfortunately, uh, for this promotion. But at the same but point, if Red Bull more... wanted to pay us, well, you know. <laughs> um. Yeah. Anyway. Well, good. Then why don't well, we move on to the main topic? Sure. Uh, let's um, talk about ways to store a plane. Now, I, yeah, let's talk about ways to store our planes. Uh, this was a, an idea given to us by a listener, uh, Richard, 
Um, he goes by Spitfire 76 on our forums and on the flight test forums. Um, he's an all around good gent. Um, and he is a 3D printing enthusiast too. Uh, but I think as he keeps printing more and more planes, he's going, oh, I'm going to have to find ways to store these things. Yeah. Oh, we got <laughs> so much room. Yeah. More so, filament than I got room. All right. Why don't you talk? Do you want to talk about your way? Do you want to talk about a couple of the ways I saw? And we can talk about the ways that we've used. Um, and then maybe say which one we think is our favorite. I guess I can go ahead and do mine because I don't know what you, what all you've seen. Well, I mean, I, I have um, it listed in the in the notes. If you oh, well, that's fair. All right, we'll go ahead and talk about the other things, then I'll do mine, and you can do yours. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so I saw a video, uh, and there's a bunch of them. If you look up RC plane rack or plane um, mount or whatever it is, you know, hangers or whatever, um, there's a whole bunch of them. But these are a couple that I – these are um, people that I know are main pieces. That, like, they, they really become a highlighted part of the community. Uh, RC model reviews do amazing reviews. I think his he's got just this format that's it reminds me of Brian, honestly, very straightforward, very direct and honest, and say this mm -hmm. is what I recommend. But you know your mileage may vary, right? Um, which I I do think he should probably. <laughs> I think he'd be good at doing that kind of thing. Um, but he had a had an episode on a friend of his built uh you know plane racks. He has one that was installed on the wall, and he said. Um, but I built a freestanding one because he was talking about what his buddy needed. He's like, I need one that I can move around, you know. I got enough space in my garage I can move it around, but I need to move it. I can't keep them all in one spot, you know. Um, so he built him this kind of two-by-two two stock uh, pine rack. And then what he ended up putting was, um, you know, the double shelving rack. You know, the, the shelving rack with the two, two hooks side by side. So it's basically um, like this U bracket, and then it it kind of there's little like uh, clips that kind of clip into that that uh, okay. strip that mounts to the wall. So we put two of those on so that at each level there'd be two uh, two supports, but they're not just a single you know on the on the I'll call it the the cheaper um, lighter duty shelves they have one vertical kind of triangle. This one has like a a U shape where it's like almost two of them next to each other. And so okay. what he did is that he had those. And then to make sure that it was soft, he, he put a little bit of foam in between the two because there's a little gap between them. And he found like a, a foam thickness that was, and it, he had a reveal of like three quarters of an inch. So whatever was resting on that shelf would rest on the foam first before it even hit the hard shell. And then on top of that, he put the pipe sleeve for like a, you know, a three quarter inch pipe. Okay. And he would kind of slide that over top of that whole top half of the beach of the brackets. And that way it protects the, the plane. So the plane, there's enough room. And he said he didn't put a lot of bracing in, in the behind. Because when you put the fuselage of the larger planes, the, the landing gear kind of sticks out. And then on the one freestanding rack, he had it on both sides. Partly to balance out the weight, but mostly so that way you could put uh, one plane one way. And on the back side, it would go the other way. That way the tail feathers don't kind of bump, you know, bump into each other. Okay. He said the landing gear had enough room to kind of go out past where it rested. And then the wings easily kind of slide either behind it or on top. Um, and that's a pretty solid system. And it's very similar, I think, to the ones that you and I kind of ended up with. It's just a little bit more... Refined? Heavy duty. <laughs> I would call it heavy duty. It gets refined be fine but i would i'll call it more heavy duty because he said i mean these brackets can hold you know hundreds of pounds right so oh, one wow. of these planes are going to reach that um then there was uh there's a there's a link to um a forum on rc groups on hanging planes from the ceiling so, and that's something I actually need to read a little bit more into. There's, it's a pretty long, fairly long list, I guess. Um, what I found is it seemed like it came down to just you know, using plant hooks, which is basically an expansion anchor that you drill a hole, you put it up, and then as you screw it down, 
it opens up a, like a T-shape. It's wide and kind of flat, and then it rests in the ceiling cavity, right? Mm-hmm. Rests on like, I, I guess like a screw-based rivet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, more or less, yeah. And then the, the bottom is like a, once you've screwed that in and tightened it, you can basically screw on uh, a hook, and then you can hang things from it. But you, you can do more with it once it's already in, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and that that's what I've used in the kitchen. Is that basically oh, okay. I just had a bunch of old plant hooks from because it's a very bright out there. Uh, so I used to have a bunch of plants, and then you know I got tired of taking care of plants um, that I sometimes remember to water, and so <laughs> some weeks they look great, and other weeks they didn't. Uh, so I ended up converting that into uh, my ready-to-go airplanes are out there, which actually I need to go through and evaluate which ones I want to have is ready to go and which ones. Are not as ready. Which to go ones now. are really ready to go? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I feel like that. There's one plane over there that I flew once or twice. I, I didn't really like how it flew, and I just hung it there because it looks nice. I should really move it <laughs> or fly it again until it breaks. There you go. And then I can go. Well, I'll let me salvage these motors. <laughs> Do something else with them. Yeah. Exactly. Um. Uh, so that was that was something, and and what I do is because it's a I only have so many hooks, right? You don't want to put a ton of hooks all over, all throughout the ceiling. Um, at least I don't always. But what I do is I take a hanger, and then I I use the bottom ends of the hanger to kind of create extra hooks. So I have like two planes, almost like a mobile, hanging from each side of that one okay. hook hanging on the ceiling. Yeah, you know, I never actually looked up to see your mechanism i just see the planes in there right and then some of them i literally just kind of draw out the triangle part of the hanger so it's it's long and and kind of like oval but mostly just long and then the hook for the actual coat rack uh, is what i hang my plane on Mm -hmm. either the wheel or um a part of the plane that that would make sense to do that the risk of that is the wire is pretty small gauge and I could definitely get some hanger rash, so so dents and whatnot in the plane. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's really part of the biggest, we'll call it biggest plus and minus, is you got to worry, that's what hanger rash is called. Is when you have uh, either a flat spot in your wheel, or uh, now you've got a like a dent, or uh, something you kind of got to fix in your plane, because it was sitting on your uh, storage system for too long. Um, and I think one last one that I saw that I've seen other people do, um, and there's various different versions of this, so your mileage may vary. Um, Nate from the RC Sailors, they basically do a lot of reviews and they kind of highlight what products are out. Uh, and then what they think of them, most of them, if they're, if it's on their channel, it's because they tried them out and they weren't garbage. <laughs> like if they're garbage, they don't even make it, you know, to, to see the light of day. Um, but generally speaking, they're, they're pretty honest about what they what they think and what they don't. But basically, they hang up by the tail feathers for the most part. Most of their planes, they put a command hook on the wall. And then they use a really thick kind of yarn, soft yarn. And they create a loop or two, depending on how they're going to hang it. Sometimes they hang it by the wings. Sometimes they hang it by the tail wheel or the empanage assembly. Um, you know, so the, you know, the rudder and the elevator uh, feathers there. Um, and then they'll hang them down, you know, so they're, they're facing downward. And he says, you know, I've got a, I've got a wall that's just got a whole myriad of planes hanging on them, and they're easy to take off. And the, the yarn is nice and soft, and it's easy to get back on the wall. You, know, you can take it off the hanger, and then you remove the yarn, and you hang it back up. And when you're done, you, you do the reverse. And it's, it's easy, and it makes it easy to get to, too. I think he puts his in, in this... In this video that we're, we're going to link, um, I think he has it in his garage. I think that's where he stores most of his, like, RTF foamies. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I seem to remember listening to an episode of the RC Plane Lab with Ron and Tom, and they were talking mm-hmm. about hanging them by the empanage. But I know, especially with the balsas, like, there's some things to take into consideration. Yeah. So I'd be curious to hear, you know, after all this is said and done, I'd be curious to hear from the balsa guys. Like, what are your mm-hmm. considerations in your storage method, or even your concerns with the storage methods that we're bringing up? Because we're very much from a like foam perspective as we're talking yeah, about we these. Yeah, 
Uh, maybe that might change, but we'll see. Um, so, and another one is more like, uh, so the, the bracket systems, I mean, the shelving brackets are, they're ready-made. They're easy to, to purchase, assemble. They go together quick. The, the assembly instructions are easy. Um, uh, you know, and only the only thing is that you just need to protect them because they're thin and, and metal. So they're not going to, they don't have any gifts. So you got to do some protective measures, right? Um, we built ours. I, I've got a wood, uh, I'll call it a wooden frame that's tilted slightly back that has PVC kind of mm -hmm. kind of stuck into it. And that, that way the planes are up a little bit and that way they don't kind of slide out maybe on me. But I've seen it uh, fully, you know, you know, pipe rack. Um, PVC pipe rack. That's what you ended up using, right? Yeah, so I've got... Tell and, us about it. I know, I know we've talked a little bit about it before, but I've got basically PVC pipe um, screwed to the wall. So did my 16 inch on center to find my wall studs, found my, uh, got a stud locator, located them and it's sections of PVC pipe. Uh, I think I used three quarter inch. Okay. I guess it yeah. doesn't matter too much other than make sure it's stiff enough uh, for your what's going to be your shelves. But it's well, um, PVC some, pipe. Go some ahead. people say they want it big enough so that it doesn't create a pressure point. Um, so, but then, with... then the other thing is like, well, if you're going to cover in like uh, pool noodles, just whatever the inside diameter of that pool noodle that you're going to buy a lot of, <laughs> you know, like yeah. use that as long as it's strong enough to hold the plane, which uh, I think so my... three quarter inch or bigger is more than enough. Yeah, my thought with if it's going to, and I didn't take necessarily take this into consideration when I was doing it, but if if you're concerned about the uh, diameter of the PVC being a pressure point, it's still a circle, and your yeah. plane is going to sit on it at a tangent, regardless yeah. if it's half inch, three quarter inch, one inch, like you're yeah. still sitting yeah, on yeah. a tangent. Yeah, you're um, right. So. You're still going to get that dent regardless. Now, if I cared enough um, and was worried about it enough, then, yeah, I could put some noodle or foam on it, mm -hmm. and I may eventually. But essentially, I've got a uh, PVC pipe that I cut to, like, foot and a half. Is that the spacing between? Yeah, I think they're, like, foot and yeah. a half sections okay. that were the, the vertical parts, and they've just got T-joints Yeah, on. I think I think mine was... Let's see. I think I ended up using like 10 inches. Yeah. You know, I was really trying to could. fit as many as I possibly could in there. Right. Yeah. No, mine were definitely spaced out because I was worried yeah. about, you know, having like you a high wing, yeah. high wing above a low wing setup. So I wanted to be sure yeah. that yeah. I had enough room. Uh, but it's it's just sections with T, T couplers in there. Mm -hmm. And then on the top and bottom are elbows. And those elbows at the top and bottom and the T's have sections of pvc that stick straight out um mm -hmm. so in ideally i'd put end caps on them and my plane just sit on them on the wing yeah uh, most of the time the, is, the flight test style planes are light enough where their own weight is very unlikely to be the cause of a dent generally yeah generally. but some of these if if you store them with battery in them or oh you know, yeah, yeah. Some heavy things yep. going on no, no, the, the other thing I would a, say, that's a different story. The other thing I say with this is when I cut my shelving, um, I just mental guessed it and did not mm -hmm. actually measure the nose section to the back of a wing. And so all my planes kind of sit right on the right on the edge or right at the end. So I really should have kept cut them longer, you know, the the shelving the shelving arms so that the plane could sit a little more comfortably without the the nose being right up against the wall but that's all mine is very simple just pvc t yeah. joints and elbows uh screwed to the wall and if you're wondering how i mounted it to the wall i took it out on my drill press and uh eyeballed the back <laughs> through the uh through the central uh what would be the the up of the t <clears throat> but basically I, I drilled through the ba the back of it just straight down so right. i created a hole to run my what ended up being a drywall screw 
but he'll bite into wood and, yeah, and yeah. drill that through. Yeah. Good. So No, it, it looks good. And honestly, your your planes look like they're easy to get to. And you have, like you said, are. space space to do, you know, the, the top and the bottom. You know, like a, a high wing and a, and a low wing kind of next to each other. Yeah, if I were to have like an old fogey that I wanted to store with the wing on, I'd have to decide which plane was going to go under the old fogey and maybe i'd put the old fogey on the bottom rack so that mm. but well, you probably I mean, have the wing either tucked behind it or, or next to it but i mean i've got the uh the vulture up top with the flurkin mm. right under it and then the yeah. spitfire under that and the seven and then the corsair and i got room for one more and then i'm, I'm thinking about doing another rack over the workbench mm-hmm. but that would be for I would try to, because this thing ended up being pretty tall. It goes almost ceiling to floor. Yeah, Just yeah. for, what, six plane slots? So, mm-hmm. you know, maybe tighten those measurements up a bit. Try yeah. to squeeze, you know, an extra plane into the space that I can. But then I'd have to be picky about which planes I put on that. And that's, yeah, yeah, those are considerations about... you got to take into account with your, yeah. you know, it's nice because it's a cheap setup, but you got to think about it. Right. I never even thought about putting a rack above the bench. I mean, it'd be tough to get to, right? For me, I mean, that's kind of the bench is big enough where it, it doesn't it doesn't make it easy to get to. Mm-hmm. One of the things I've noticed in people's trailers is I'll see a similar rack system, but um, instead of coming straight out, they go because the space is floor plan space is very limited, right? Um, so what they'll do is they'll have it come out and go 45 degrees up and they will put them pretty tight together because that's where they put their wings. So all the wings of the planes go in this like vertical rack that's at 45 degrees. So it keeps the footprint of that really small. Mm -hmm. Right. And then all the fuselages sit in saddles, you know, the, the rest of the planes and they kind of go, you know, uh, head to toe, toe to head. Right. Um, and in the thing in saddles. So your tail feathers can can have a little space. bit of breathing room. Yep. Right. And then that, and then so all the wings sit on the wall up above the the floor, and, and sometimes I'll even see them have multiple levels of that, you know, fuselage cradles. Okay. Um, to match where the wings are, which is pretty cool. It's neat to kind of see. And I, I I thought about that, like maybe that would be something, if I knew most of my planes had the wing come off. Right, then that makes sense. Yeah, and that would be a far more efficient to just have like on one wall, just store the fuselages, right, and they do an as a horizontal piece, and then, and then the next to it have on the forty fives all the wings that go with it. Like that that would be pretty, pretty keen, I think. Hello, Miss Roxy. Hi. Yes. Puppy dog. <laughs> Puppy dog. So the other way that I've stored them, and I won't do this in here anymore, probably, because the man cave's been redone. Mm-hmm. But I did take those uh, J wall hooks. Yeah, that's that you the command push. Hook, right? uh, I mean, maybe. I guess that is the command hook. I didn't. I didn't think about well, that. I was like command. Is it strips. one of those wire ones that push into the wall? Yeah, it's got like the the chiseled needle point. And you okay? Push yeah, yeah. Through. It's not the same, but yeah. Yeah. So I, I did that to my ceiling in several areas okay. and then the, ran the fishing go? string down and a couple different ways or a couple different planes to secure them to the plane. Yeah. And, and the, the cool thing about that was when they were hanging, I could, you know, use one or two of those hooks to one to hold all three points or two, one for the wings, one for the tail section, but you could mm-hmm. adjust the the string lengths and then you have a plane that was in a in a right. descent halfway turning okay yeah thing. like you you could make the plane look like okay i'm in i'm in flight right yeah yeah you, you could know? do an action and action pose you could you know and i, I had <laughs> like three it. or four planes hung up in here at one point yeah, that's a... but that's not the easiest uh to hang or get back down when you're ready to fly one yeah especially if your ceilings are higher than you can reach Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then in which case you got to get a little stick with a little y prong to kind of just just pull it off of the hook just pull it off. Um, well my corsair fell off one time um yeah don't hang course... it by the rubber bands by the way they will get no it. no no uh but, but my that's experience talking on my side 
my glue, my hot glue gave loose because I was using hot glue to basically oh. just glue a fishing swivel. Okay. To the top of the wing, and that's what I was using to tie my fishing string to to go up hmm. to the command hook. Yeah, I guess anyway. need some a little bit more solid. I w I'm kind of surprised by that. That's good to know. I was kind of, I was I'm wondering how that worked out. Uh, one of the planes, the the glue ended up, the the hot glue ended up giving out. Hmm. Yeah, and I don't remember which one it was and what the situation was, but basically it was on a smooth surface and it just didn't bite well enough. Yeah. So I know another plane I like actually cut into the wing so I could like glue and bury the swivel down in there. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Yeah. No. I, no, I remember you doing it. I was like, that's, that's pretty good. I think if I had a mind to whittle mine down, and, it. <laughs> yeah, and want to want to want to put a couple up there to to show off, that's definitely uh, one of the ways I do it. it. Sounds pretty awesome. Um, so I guess one little bit on hangar rest. We talked about what it is. It's basically pressure points from your support system mm -hmm. um, that end up creating more pressure than the plane can handle over long haul. That ends up creating a dent or or a pressure divot or something like that. So really what you're what you're aiming and needing to do is to make sure that the pressure is distributed. And that in the the wall rack system they used um, foam, a little bit softer material that was proud of the actual rack itself and a foam container around it. We talked about using pool noodles to go over the three quarter inch uh, PVC. Same kind of deal. The the pool noodle will give and spread the load out before it hits a hard point where it it you know it can't give anymore, right? Um, I've seen people use uh, rags using the soft yarn, for example. Again, if you're not storing any batteries in your planes, then the the weight's pretty minimal on most aircraft that you're going to build. Um, yeah, it, even... it's just really important. Even a hand towel wrapped around yep. the surface. Like, you can go yeah. as fancy or not as you want to be. Right. And and another thing about wheels. A lot of people will store their planes just kind of sitting on their wheels. They're like, I got landing gear. It's going to be great. And then they pick up their plane after about, you know, three months. <laughs> and what do they have but a flat spot on their, on their wheel? So the foam yep. ends up compressing, and it doesn't come back after three months of sitting like that. And if it does, yep. it's going to take a while. You ever see somebody going down the highway and they're hauling a trailer yeah, that the, 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 it's been the, sitting in their backyard yeah. for a while? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and they haven't been shifting it around a little bit. Yeah, 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 exactly. And so, I mean, it happens in real life normally, so don't be surprised if it's happening to your plane. One of the ways to combat that um, I, is, again, distribute the load. So create a cradle for the wheels to sit in. And you can mm. even hang hang your plane by the landing gear if you create a cradle that is exactly the diameter of the outside of your tire, and it, and it basically you know distributes that whole weight of your plane across the entire tire, um, you're far less likely to have um, any you know, permanent compressions. Um, foam, I, I've done that with the the pool noodle. That doesn't take that long to start creating that. It's you know like a month of sitting in the same spot. Uh, we'll create kind of a divot, but then again, it's just pool noodle, so you kind of take them off, and put, cut on a cut on a new section, and be done. You know, no fair. But I mean, if you're looking to take off and you hear thumpity 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 thumpity, you're like, darn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's a, you know that that's really what we're talking about. Is we're trying to make sure that there's not a a divot in your wing. If you're storing it like upside down, uh, you don't want a divot in the top of your wing. That's that's the meat, the bread and butter of your aerodynamics, right? And you're going to mess with that if you if you leave it upside down on your rack. Unless it's, you know, supported and padded and all that kind of stuff. I'm just trying to think of what else. I think that's it. I mean, aside from just yep. throw them in the corner in a big pile. Well, yeah. I mean, I am I just do it so that the nose is down. And it's lightly against the wall. And you can't really get much hang rest from that. So yeah. I'm good at that. I got a whole <laughs> Jenga tower in the back corner. Or... You'd be like Tyler Perry in his vi in the video, and just you, just have your own buy, property, buy a house, to barn somewhere, and like hey, reef retrofit. Just living the dream, okay? We can only we can only aspire to it. Right? 
yeah, we, we can only have the pipe dream of having something like that. Well, but I mean, I've known a number of people who basically convert their garage to their storage space and workspace for RC or a shed mm -hmm. out back. That's not unheard of. I mean, no, you know, so uh, <laughs> I guess don't knock until we try it. Right, <laughs> man. If if I had the house that I grew up in and the shed that we built in the backyard, mm -hmm. I'd be I'd have ha planes hanging from the ceiling all over the place. I'm trying very hard not to do it in my house. <laughs> I'm really, it's so tempting. Well, you got that old playhouse out there, don't you? Yeah, I'd, I'd have thought about cleaning that out, but I'd have to insulate it. It gets awful hot in there. That's it, all, all the I, That might be where I'd store a balsa plane, maybe. But then again, it's also North Carolina. And you know how North and South Carolina get. The humidity is 150%. Mm -hmm. Like you can literally grab some air and ring it and all of a sudden stuff comes out. You're like, what the heck? Yeah. How the heck in the world? Yeah, and of course it's you know 100 and 100 plus in the summer. So, and then a little shed, it's 120. And if there's any hot glue, just forget about it. So what you're saying is, I should store my planes in my attic. Oh yeah, if you want them <laughs> to turn back into foam sheets, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> yeah. All right. Exactly. Well, I, I, think I think that's that it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much wraps up the different storage methods we have. If you have a different idea, feel free to write in and let us know about it or uh, talk about it in the show comment section of the Discord server. Mm -hmm. Feel free to share pictures of your storage methods. Matthew and I love it when you guys share pictures, and I know I think it was two episodes. There ended up being a really good conversation going on in the, the comments channel. Um, I think it was about the history segment. Um but there was a whole conversation going on in there. So that was, you know, we, we routinely have that. It's like, you know, it'll go quiet for a couple of days and then somebody will drop something. And then a whole, a whole conversation comes about and people are talking about this, that, and the other. And it's always, I, I again, but like we've done it before, but I want to thank our community for being so supportive and positive. And I mean, <clears throat> like Red said, I don't know. We're talking about planes. That's all I need to know. <laughs> right <laughs> and that seems to be where the you know the common common thread always seems to come down to and you know we're talking about things we love to talk about that we we can't oftentimes can't talk to um the the people who we share most of our lives with because they're like eh, i don't care <laughs> it's i'm glad you like it you can enjoy it <laughs> mm -hmm. please stop talking about that plane <laughs> <laughs> and it's okay um, you've got us. Come join the Discord community. You can talk about planes all day long. We're okay. That's right. And people won't get tired of it. No, not at all. And we encourage it, actually, often. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So we're good. Um, Joe, do you mind taking us out? You do it so well. Sure. Why not? Well, guys, as always, we thank you for tuning in and listening. We hope you've enjoyed listening to this episode as much as Matthew and I have enjoyed uh, having the conversation. And we hope that maybe a few of you are able to gain some insights into uh, plain storage or some different ideas on how to approach it and gave you some things to think about as you're approaching that idea. If you have any thoughts, comments, questions, concerns, feel free to reach out to us. You can reach us at aviationrcnoob at gmail.com. You can reach Matthew at Matthew at aviationrcnoob.com or you can reach me, Joe, at aviationrcnoob.com. Feel free to reach out to us on the Facebook group not page although we do have the page uh or you can join us in our discord server <coughs> link will be down in the doobly do thank you matthew coville uh as always thank you to our patrons for continuing to keep the lights going uh so we don't have to worry about it and we can continue doing this wonderful hobby that we enjoy doing oh so very much um <laughs> yeah and I think that's about it. We're we're actually recording this the night that the episode ninety three went live, so we're ahead uh -huh. of schedule uh -huh. for the first time in forever. Uh, well, we're behind schedule because I don't know. But let's not worry about okay, that. Okay, the release was behind schedule, but that puts us ahead of schedule. Yeah, I like the positive way you spin that. See? Yeah, nice. That's and by the way, like I, I appreciate you very much, Joe. Thank <laughs> you for seriously. Thank you for being av available to come on tonight. I know sometimes. Uh, I recognize in the next coming weeks, it's going to be um, 
it, we're gonna Maybe. we're gonna we'll see touch base and see if it's possible and if it isn't well uh we'll we'll find we'll something, something else out. to do but uh, i hope you can make it every week i, yeah, I appreciate too. you all right well if you've got nothing else no that's it all right guys thank you again and we will see y'all next time bye Bye-bye. What do we want to call this episode? You won't believe how we store airplanes. Five ingenious tips to keep your planes on the wall and off your floor. <clears throat> Alexa, stop. Oh, money. We're going to play Let It Be in the background.